Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation on skin cancer. My name is Natasha, I'm one of the interns at McKean Hospital. Today we'll be talking about keratinocyte cancers such as BCCs and SECs, melanomas and actinic keratoses. The resources I've used to make this presentation include Dermnet NZ, which I highly recommend, the British Journal of General Practice and Cancer Council Australia. So let's jump right into it. If you would like to pause and think about what you already know about BCCs, um, I'd recommend that. Otherwise, we'll move right into it. So BCCs are the most common form of skin cancer. They're locally invasive and made out of keratinocytes. The risk factors for BCC include being older and male, having a previous history of BCC, sun damage, um, having type 1 skin, so fair skin, blue eyes and blonde or red hair, and having previous cutaneous injury such as a thermal burn. Now it's interesting to note, and something that Tim, who's organising all these presentations, actually taught me, was that the difference between BCCs and SCCs in terms of sun exposure is that BCCs are more likely for after exposure of high dose intermittent sun as opposed to like a lifetime exposure, which is more associated with SECs. Anyway, so the clinical features of BCCs are different depending on the type of BCC. So there's nodular BCCs, superficial BCCs, and sclerosing BCCs. So starting with the superficial ones, they're more common in young adults, and they're typically on the trunk or the shoulders, and they're scaly, irregular plaques and they're quite thin and they have a translucent rolled border. This is as as opposed to the nodular BCCs which is probably the more classic one we think of when we think of a BCC um, like the image in the top. They're, they're often on the face or the nose, um, they're shiny or pearly with a smooth surface and actually if you stretch the skin while examining one of these it becomes more shiny. So they may have a central depression or ulceration, um, which makes the edges appear rolled. And they often have telangiectasia, which is uh, being able to see blood vessels on the surface. So interestingly, dif the difference between S superficial BCCs and nodular BCCs, superficial BCCs don't normally bleed or itch, whereas nodular BCCs can do so. And finally, there's the uh, sclerosing BCCs, which appear to be more like a pale scar. And these are the most dangerous because they can um, invade quite deeply. And because they don't have a classic appearance, they're easier to miss. So in terms of diagnosis, um, BCCs are diagnosed clinically with the typical clinical features. Um, but then to confirm your diagnosis, you need to do uh, excisional biopsy for histopathology. So in terms of management options, there are quite a few. Um, it usually depends on the location and the size and the clinician's expertise and preferences. So I guess the most simple way to get rid of a BCC is an excisional biopsy. Having said that, if it's um, on the nose or um, in the like folds around the nose that can be incredibly difficult to first get it out um, but also have a good cosmetic result so then you might consider something like um, cryotherapy or photodynamic therapy now that's at the GP level of course there are more specialized treatment options and that would be something like Mohs micrographic controlled excision. So this is done by highly, highly trained surgeons um, and it is quite a disfiguring surgery in which each layer of the skin is taken off micros microscopic, microscopically um, to ensure that there's a complete excision. And this would be for high risk cancers um, and extremely difficult areas like around the lips or the nasal fold as I said before. Okay. Okay, moving on to SECs. 
Again, if you'd like to pause and think about what you know about SECs, that is highly recommended. Uh, so SECs are another common type of keratinocyte cancer. Risk factors, again, very similar. Elderly males, previous SEC or other skin cancer, actinic keratosis, outdoor occupation recreation. So um, as I mentioned in BCCs, SECs, um, the risk goes up with your total lifetime exposure of sun. Um, then smoking is also a risk factor, having fair skin, previous cutaneous injury, um, and immunosuppression. The pathophysiology of SECs, to keep it very brief, um, is that 90, greater than 90% are associated with numerous DNA mutations in multiple somatic genes. For example, so for example, tumor suppressor gene P53, which can be mutated with um, UV light exposure. The clinical features of SECs are enlarging, scaly or crusted lumps that usually arise from a pre-existing actinic keratosis. They, de they develop over weeks to months, may ulcerate and are often tender or painful. They're usually located on sun exposed areas. The diagnosis, just like a BCC, is based on clinical features and confirmed with a diagnostic biopsy. Truman is usually with that uh, initial biopsy, um, or if the margins are insufficient, then you might go back in and re excise. Alternatively, for large tumours, one GP by themselves wouldn't be tackling this, so referral to dermatology, or if it comes to it, um, medical oncology or radi radiation oncologist. Then finally, in terms of outcomes, about 50% of people at high risk of SEC develop a second one within five years of the first. Okay, moving on to melanoma, the big topic. So, uh, melanomas are an uncontrolled growth of melanocytes, and normal melanocytes are located in the basal layer of the epidermis, and they produce melanin. So non-cancerous growth of melanocytes results in moles and freckles. Risk factors for melanoma is increasing age, previous invasive melanoma or melanoma in situ, previous BCCs or SECs, having many melanocytic nevi, um, and having a strong family history or fair skin that burns easily. The way that melanoma spread is that once the cells have reached the dermis, they spread to other tissues via the lymphatic system or via the bloodstream. 75% of the time they arise from otherwise normal appearing skin um, or otherwise they can appear from within a mole or a freckle. In terms of clinical features, they can occur anywhere in the body. Um, they usually start as a skin lesion but can grow on mucous membrane. The first sign is usually an unusually unusual looking mole or freckle. And they can come in a variety of colours, including uh, tan, dark brown, black, blue, red, and occasionally light grey. Some are itchy or tender. Um, so there's many ways to think about the clinical features of a melanoma, including the ABCD approach, chaos and clues, and the Glasgow 7 point scale. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just covering the Glasgow 7 point scale today. So by no means is this a perfect scoring system. Uh, a lesion can meet all of these criteria and not be a melanoma, and, uh, or it could uh, meet none of them and still be a melanoma. In terms of major and minor points, um, if greater than three points are met, then um, they recommend referral to a dermatologist. So the major points are a change in the size of a lesion, irregular pigmentation, or an irregular border. Minor features are inflammation, itch or altered sensation, uh, the lesion being larger than others, so greater than 7 millimetres, or oozing and crusting of the lesion. Um, then diagnosis of melanoma is suspected due to the clinical features or because of the history of change, um, but diagnosis is made histologically again. So a suspicious lesion should be excised with a 2 to 3 millimeter clinical margin and then sent to histopathology. So the histopathology will confirm if it's a melanoma or not. 
um, and when when it, when the report comes back, they should include a Breslow thickness, which is measured the distance in millimetres from the top of the granular layer to the deepest point of the tumour. And this is a strong predictor of outcome. It also helps us decide uh, the level of margins that the lesion should have if we need if we haven't got clear margins in our first excision. Um, yes. <laughs> okay, so I have a little treatment summary for, mel for melanoma. So say we suspect a lesion, we do an excisional biopsy, the histopathology comes back and says that it is in fact a melanoma. Then based on this, uh, we should also know if there's clear margins or not. If there are not clear margins, then we need to go back in and depending on the size of the melanoma, uh, excise with these margins that I've listed here. And this is evidence-based. Um, we may or may not require a sentinel node biopsy based on the involvement of uh, local lymph nodes. Now this is not um, for a GP to decide, this is more of a specialist decision. Uh, it's interesting to note that central node biopsy does not actually offer a survival advantage. So if this is a metastatic melanoma or a widespread melanoma, uh, obviously a medical oncologist needs to be involved and they might suggest systemic therapy, which I won't be covering today. Um, but in the last five to ten years, there's been some really great leaps and bounds in terms of how well we can treat melanomas. Moving right along to the humble actinic keratosis, um, also known as a solar keratosis. They're scaly spots found on sun-damaged skin, and they're considered precancerous or early forms of SECs. Similar risk factors again, but fair skin, other signs of photoaging skin, history of long hours spent in the sun. Um, they, in terms of clinical features, they can be solitary, but they're often multiple. Um, and they're flat or thickened, papules or plaques that are white, yellowy or scaly, um, with a wart, warty or horny appearance. They can be skin coloured, red or pigmented, uh, and they can be tender or asymptomatic. And they're very, very common on sites repeatedly exposed to the sun, so the upper arms and the forearms, the face, the nose, the ears. It's um, quite rare for a solitary actin actinic keratosis to evolve into an SEC, but the risk of transformation occurring in a patient with more than 10 uh, is thought to be 10 to 15 percent. Um, lesions that are tender, thickened, ulcerating or enlarging are suspicious for SECs. Um, diagnosis is clinical uh, with the assistance of dermatoscopy. Uh, treatment is entirely, again, based on the practitioner. Um, what I've seen most commonly is cryotherapy, um, which is great, especially if there's large, like, large areas of affected, like many lesions, because you don't have to individually go and excise every lesion. You can just do cryotherapy. <laughs> the other treatments have varying success rates um, and depend on the expertise of the person administering them, what's available to them, those kind of things. Okay, so let's finish up with a spot quiz. So let's start with image A. Um, so we can see that this is a flat lesion with a scaly appearance that's on fair skin. Um, unfortunately, we don't know the size of it or the clinical history, um, but based off that alone, I'd be more inclined to say that this is either an actinic keratosis or a SEC. Then moving on to lesion B. So this is a nodule, a raised lesion um, that has a pearly appearance with telangiectasia. Um, it, they, it could be that there's a raised edge. So this is more suspicious of a BCC. Moving on to C, a nice pigmented lesion, or maybe not so nice pigmented lesion. Um, going through our scoring system. Um, is there a change in size? 
not chalk, we need the history. Is there an irregular shape? Yes. Is there an irregular colour? Yes. Um, is it greater than seven millimetres? We don't know. Is there inflammation? Doesn't look like it. And is it oozing? Not really. Uh, is there a change in sensation? Again, we need that classification. But this has maybe it's given us four points on our Glasgow scale. So this would be suspicious for a melanoma. Then moving on to lesion, lesion D. Um, so this is a flat lesion. It looks a little erythematous. Um, it's got a few different colours going on. It doesn't look particularly scaly. Um, so it's not really fitting classically into any of our three differential diagnoses. Um, so let's take it through the Glasgow scale and see how we go. So again, we can't say that there's a change in shape necessarily, but it does have an irregular shape and irregular colours. It's got two colours going on. Um, we need to measure it um, to see if it's greater than seven centimetres. Uh, again, not doesn't look inflamed and it doesn't appear to be oozing and we need to check with the patient if there's any change in sensation. But again, this has four points on our Glasgow scale. So it's suspicious for a melanoma. Uh, image E, what on earth is going on? This doesn't even necessarily look like a skin cancer. It could just be a scar. Um, so I kind of put this one in to show you that skin cancer spot diagnosis is not that successful. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, this is actually an SEC, which is interesting because it doesn't look ulcerated, but it is on the face. And it is very large. Okay, moving on to F. So this is a, again a nodule. It's pearly in appearance. Um, not so much telangiectasia, uh, but it is on the face. So we're again suspecting BCC. And finally, image G, which is uh, raised but not quite so nodular as F. Um, there is again a pearly appearance to it. It looks like it's got, uh, it's been scratched, it's got some scabs on it. And it looks like it might have that central umbilication umbilicus that we associate with BCC. Okay, so that was my um, presentation on skin cancers. I hope it's been useful, I hope you learnt something, um, and I'll just check in a quick apology for uh, all the noises that you may or may not have heard in the background. Okay, I'm um, happy to receive any emails if you have any questions. I'll put my email address on the first slide. Okay, thanks, bye.